Today we're going to be talking about vitamin B12, also known as cobalamin, which is a core and ring structure that actually has cobalt in the center. So this is a water-soluble vitamin found in animal products like meats and shellfish, and it's stored in the liver, as you can see here in orange. So here we have drawn our general digestive tract, and you can see the stomach in the pink, followed by the small intestine, which has three parts, the duodenum, labeled D, the jejunum, and the ileum. So in our food, B12 is bound to the actual protein. So we're going to indicate the location of B12 by this nice red color. So when it, B12 enters the stomach bound to the protein, parietal cells, you can see here in the purple, secrete pepsin to digest the peptide bonds, and B12 is separated from the food protein. The acidic pH of the stomach creates a high affinity for R binders to bind to B12. So these R binders are bound to the B12 and together they enter the small intestine where the R binders become partially digested by pancreatic proteases and cause the release of B12. So in the duodenum, which has a more neutral pH, there's a high affinity for intrinsic factor, IF, to pick up the free B12 to create the vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex. So the intrinsic factor complex then travels to the ileum where it is absorbed at the brush border and is released from the intrinsic factor. Now you can see here in the yellow a close-up view of the lining of the ileum. So we're focusing in on the brush border here where we have enterocytes. B12 then enters the blood bound to either transcobalamin, which accounts for 20 to 30 percent, or haptocorin, about 70 to 80 percent, to form the active B12 complex known as holotranscobalamin. Active B12 is either then transported to the liver for storage or used in cells. Moving over to the cell, cobalt is then broken off via a lysosome and B12 is released into the cytosol. Once it is in the cytosol, we can use it as a cofactor for two different enzymes, methionine synthase and methylmalonyl mutase. B12 has many functions, but its primary role as a cofactor really involves many of the things we've been learning about in other videos. One of our first enzymes, methionine synthase, which we're going to indicate our enzymes in the yellow, uh, generates methionine from homocysteine. So when homocysteine accumulates in the body, it increases the risk for cardiovascular disease. In order to create methionine, we combine vitamin B12 and methionine synthase to make methionine. The methionine then gets phosphorylated with ATP to create s adenosine methionine, also called SAM. So you may have heard of SAM, uh, which is a methyl donor used in many biological methylation reactions. We see it within DNA formation and proteins. So here we see methyl transferase is then used to complete all of these methylation reactions. The leftover product, s homocysteine, is then recycled to become homocysteine, our end product. Our second function of B12 that we're going to look at today is the cofactoring of the methylmalonyl mutase reaction to form succinyl-CoA. We start with our odd chain fatty acids, which are carboxylated to the L-methylmalonyl-CoA, adding in B12 and our methylmalonyl mutase enzyme are then used to create succinyl-CoA, which we all know can be used in the citric acid cycle to eventually create ATP or it can also be used in a condensation reaction with glycine to make red blood cells. And so here today we've looked at two main functions of vitamin B12, its absorption and digestion.